The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Sugar Sean O'Malley wins UFC 292. Yes, we know that's old news by now, but we haven't been able to talk about it. We want to talk about it. So we're going to get to it. And also, Jonathan Taylor officially is on the trade block. So we're going to have to talk about everything that's gone on there for the Colts and for Jonathan Taylor. And Jim Harbaugh is officially suspended for three games. Not the four that we thought originally, but three games for this whole Burger Gate. And of course, we're going to have to talk about some things in the two-minute drill. And we're also going to give you the rest of our top 20 guys to watch out for this upcoming season. I know you guys have waited too too long for the rest of this list, but we're here with it. We're going to bring it to you today on Rising to the Occasion. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're so happy to be back with you. A very hot and busy week, uh, so we were not able to get anything out on Tuesday. Apologies for that, but we are back here today, which is now Thursday uh, for you guys. So we're going to talk about a lot of sports, a lot of things going on. But before we do, we want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that for us. We're trying to reach 5,000. That might not reach it. We might not reach that before this upcoming Saturday for uh, the official kickoff uh, of college football, but maybe we can reach that by the true week one where we actually have everybody kicking it off. So let's go for that. All right. 5,000 before next Saturday, but guys, we're finally here where we're almost to college football. Very exciting. So we've got a lot of stuff to talk about with that. That's why we want to wrap up this list of top 20 guys to look out for and so much more. But before we do, we want to talk about a little bit of things in the golf world, all right, because they say that a golfer's paradise is made of polos, hats, maybe even some t-shirts, uh, you know, things of, of that na- nature, and even maybe a perfectly manicured green, you know, and that's definitely the case, but we think that they're missing something, and that is Mahler Bros Golf. All right, so you need to go check out MahlerBros.com. That's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com. Go check it out today because that is what you are missing if you're a golfer. If you know someone who's a golfer, they're missing out on Mahler Bros Golf. You need to go check it out for them or have them go check it out for themselves if you don't feel like doing it themselves. And not only that, but a lot of golfers recognize that they need a fresh cup of joe in the morning whenever they're going out to, to link up on the golf course. So make sure to go over to Mahler Bros Golf because not only do we have the best polos, the best hats, and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff there at MahlerBros.com. There's also the first ever that we know of golf-themed coffee. So go check it out. A lot of amazing stuff happening over at MahlerBros.com. So check it out at MahlerBros.com and use code RISING2 for 15% off. Yes, we used to have that for just 10% off, but for our loyal listeners, we have bumped that up to 15% off if you go over and check out MahlerBros.com. 15% off on anything you purchase site-wide. So that's an amazing deal right there. Some amazing polos, amazing t-shirts, uh, all kinds of fun stuff like that on the t-shirts. Uh, we even just got a few a few new t-shirts. Uh, Jeremy's actually wearing, wearing one, one of his today. I just now realized that. But uh, all kinds of fun stuff over there. And like I said, some of the best coffee. So even if you're not a golfer and you just want some good coffee, mallerbros.com go check it out there is coffee over there so you can check that out and again for being our loyal listener that's code rising two that's r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o for 15 percent off let me go ahead and bring in my two co- co-hosts for the evening we've got blake lane and jeremy russell guys we're gonna have to talk about ufc real quick because this past weekend we were talking about how exciting it was going to be to watch uh, you know this this championship fight for ufc 292 and watch sugar sean and Really, that's that's the main reason why I tuned in. But I mean, Blake, we expected we you know we were we, I think we were all kind of rooting for for the Sugar Show, but for him to come out and win it in the second round, I almost took a bet on over two and a half rounds, uh, and I'm really glad that I didn't throw that in there because Sugar Sean won me some money. Yeah, fellas, uh, you know, right before it happened, I hit a five fight parlay and I said, well, I'm going to I'm going to dabble some of that 150 on Sean O'Malley to end this thing. 
uh, inside of five rounds. So, uh, you know, I didn't see a second round knockout coming, but uh, I, I'm damn glad it did. So, oh, look, Sean, he said before the fight, right, he said, don't make a mistake or I'm going to make you pay. And they were on a podcast the other day and uh, Al Jermaine was talking trash and, and he disconnected and the host said, hey, man, like, uh, you know, Al Jermaine disconnected. And Sean said, yeah, because I'm going to disconnect his jaw Saturday night. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> he did, man. Al Jermaine, I think Al Jermaine got a little greedy. I think he got a little frustrated that Sean's quickness and movement around the ring and Al Jermaine was having trouble uh, trying to trying to shoot and, and get the takedown and everything. And, you know, right before it happened, Sean slipped and fell. And Al Jermaine got a leg when he got his leg. And I, I you know, I was kind of worried because I was like, here we go. Like he's going to, he's going to ragdoll Sean down to the ground and, uh, and he's going to work Sean because uh, they gave Al Jermaine that first round. And as it should have been, you know, like he won it cool. Like it was really boring, but uh, you know, he landed a little more and, and at the end right there, he, he did a little bit more damage. But uh, when Sean broke out of that and got his leg loose, uh, you know, we, we kind of started everybody I was watching it with. We were like, okay, like Sean's defending the takedowns. Like he's doing great work up against the cage. And then Al Jermaine lunged, man. And, and when you wind up like that and you miss, uh, you know, you leave everything exposed and Sean made him pay. Uh, as far as, the, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as the stoppage went, like Al Jermaine said that, hey, like I was still, you know, I, I had cobwebs, but. I still knew where I was at, but the thing with the stoppage, man, is like Sean was, you know, he was bringing the hammer fist down. He was raining them like crazy. A couple of them, a couple of them landed and everything. Uh, but when Al Jermaine gave his back away, like that is, I think where, you know, the ref stepped in and was like, okay, Al Jermaine's like his back's exposed. Like Sean's about to start just absolutely waylaying him. He's about to take his back, and I think he just said that's enough, you know. Uh, and Al Jermaine says that, like, you know, he was still in it and everything, but uh, the only reason he was able to get up was because they had done push Sean off. And and so, like, I just think the fight was over, man. And, and even if he would have come back, uh, I still think his world was a little rocked, and I don't think he would have done much. And I think Sean might have pieced him up even more. So, yeah, uh, you know, kudos to Sean, man. Like I, everybody was doubting him, right? Especially after that Peter Yan fight, like everybody was saying that he couldn't do it. And in the in the in the post game, he he told he told Joe Rogan, he said, "Hey, this right hand's deadly, and I know what I can do with it." So. He said, I'm just that damn good. So kudos to him, man. Congrats to Sean O'Malley. He's the superstar of the UFC right now. And you could tell Dana White was wanting Sean to win because he was grinning from ear to ear, bro, when he when he knocked Al Jermaine out. So, yeah, uh, yeah the UFC, the, yeah, they got, a, they got a star on their hands, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely the, the sugar show time. And, you know, it was it was a fun fight. Uh, and, and like you said, it, it was kind of an early stoppage. I can agree with that. But at the same time, I don't think anyone can try to say that that fight wouldn't have been over if he let it go further. And I, I do think that there's a difference between stopping it and saying, this is about to get out of hand, so I'm just going to stop it now before it does, and stopping it too early, like, oh, you didn't give him the chance. No, there, there really was no chance there. And so, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that changed too much. And one thing that, that uh, Sean said after the, after the uh the fight and, and the press conferences and everything he was talking and one of the reporters said something about how they scored the first round in favor uh, of, of Al Jermaine. And he, he says, Oh yeah. How, how'd they score that second round? Oh, that's right. You know, they didn't even get to, to put a, put a, in any kind of a, a score in there, but Jeremy it was, a, it was a fun fight. Uh, really, really the whole court card. I think, uh, you know, it was a, a little bit of, of a boring fight here and an exciting fight. There it wasn't the best card. I don't think, but I do, do think the fight before that, uh, and then, you know, leading up to this one, uh, a, a really fun fight and huge, huge props to Sean. Oh, yeah, definitely. My congratulations to Sugar Sean. That was an unbelievable fight to do what you did in the second round, then prove a lot of the haters wrong and say, you can run your mouth all you want, but at the end of the day, who's going to be the one with their hand up over their head? But as you mentioned, the fight before, that was a... I've, I've seen a lot of UFC fights, but I've never seen a woman take such a beating and make it all five rounds. I took a picture of it, actually, just to get the exact numbers for total strikes. And 
Once I saw the strike count, I was truly mesmerized. It was 288 to 21 for strikes. I saw that. I was My jaw hit the floor, and I was just like, how the heck did you make all five rounds? But my hat's off to both of the fighters. They were both unbelievable fighters and contenders, and it was an overall great match to watch. Then, Like we've all said before, it just takes all the time in the gym and cardio and everything to get your stamina and body right just to be able to do five rounds of that yeah because my my butt wouldn't even do five seconds of that um but going back to the main card that was a that was a really good fight with sugar sean then i know blake you mentioned the best once he got wobbling it was it was going to be become over pretty soon then i was you and i were, were talking earlier before the fight we were we were kind of surprised that herb dean wasn't going to be the the main official for that fight but i know you mentioned that they can't do more than one fight then in, like, the, in the main card. Yeah, usually the main they don't. Usually. Yeah. But I, I, I don't think it would have been too much longer. If anything, I thought maybe another 30 seconds of most, but looking at it, it, it was pretty much over when it was over in my honest he, opinion. He had maybe another five seconds before it was yeah, just all black. It was, it was um, just all black and white. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but bringing up the, the way Lee Lamos fight though, that was insane. Kind of looking yeah. at that uh, and, and just seeing how, you know, oh, first off, you know, huge, a huge uh, hats off to Amanda Lemos for being Hanging able to in stick there. in there with, with yeah. that many strikes and everything. Like goodness, she's tough. I mean, that oh, was man. that was insane. But then also, she even sunk a few, a few, uh, you know, like a guillotine at one point. I think there was another really? one that she sunk on Wei Lee. Uh, that Wei Lee just kept calm, yeah. and she was able to get out of that stuff. So I mean, that was that was really impressive, really on both ends of that fight. And and mm-hmm. just showing how tough both of those those girls are, yeah. um, but ultimately Wei Li ended up ended up coming out, uh, and, and there was really no doubt on who was gonna who was gonna no. win that at the end of it. But I, it was shocking to me because we were we were all saying like I don't know if she's gonna get out of the second or third round here, yeah. and she went she went the distance, and so that was definitely a, a really fun uh, on awesome. the on the women's uh, straw weight. Uh, so I mean that was yeah it, it was a fun main two main events you know the, the both for for both main events yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I look. I, I was I was kind of underwhelmed in Ian Gary's performance. I wanted him to finish that fight. Yeah, and uh, and the fact that he couldn't finish it, uh, that just kind of left me. It left me a little uh, just underwhelmed, man. Like like I just wanted him to go in and 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 just finish it, take control of the fight, man. Because that's what people in the UFC want to see, right? Like the UFC fans, we want to see finishes. And I know you tore his legs up and everything, and. And you were flipping him off uh, after the round ended and all that. Like, Which yeah, time? I know you want to be. I know you want to be the next Connor, but Connor would have ended that fight in in a round and a half. You know, yeah, so yeah. like, yeah, that was one I, thing that I wasn't I wasn't impressed with was like he he got his good connections in there and it still wasn't enough to really end it. Uh, you know, and and, and I, I think to be in the UFC, there's guys like Sugar Sean who can. You know, Sean O'Malley can fight and and be good, and even Connor was the same way. Fight and be good on your feet, but you've got to have better takedown defense and being able to get yourself off the the yeah. fence faster. And uh, those were just kind of those are kind of the the, the things that I think uh, you know Ian Gary I think is one of them that needs to work on. I think Sean needs to work on it because he's he's gonna face of a wrestler yeah. one of these times, and that wrestler is gonna bring him down. We saw that the first uh, big time for, and I really like. I, at first, I hated it. But I really like the comparison between Connor and Sean O'Malley, and I'm seeing it more and more as I think about it. Yeah. Uh, just just seeing where they started, how they got there, and just how they exploded overnight, and and now you know seeing how you know it, it's basically just a reversal because uh, Connor's a southpaw and uh, Sean is is a, an orthodox right. fighter. Yeah. So I mean, just just seeing the power behind Connor's left uh, compared to to Sean's right, and seeing how fast it can put somebody to sleep and and even even the, the the similarities in some of their fights. So you know, Connor. I think the first time we saw that was against Chad Mendez. Uh, Jose Aldo stepped out, said that he couldn't fight. So uh, Connor fought Chad Mendez, and Chad Mendez kept on trying to take him down, but couldn't couldn't get him, get him to the ground. And it, sh- it showed how good Connor's uh, uh, kind of more or less ground defense, not ground game, but his ground defense, yeah. and being able to sprawl just like that, and just the speed. And I think that's something that Sean can learn from Connor is how fast he is to react, uh, not just when it comes to takedown defense, but then also just how quick it, it was for him to get on. Uh, you know, if you think of like if you go back and like watch Connor against Jose Aldo, 
and how as soon as Jose Aldo hit the mat, hammer fists are already hitting him. Mm-hmm. It took Sean a little too too long to get those hammer fists in. That's why I I, I thought that the the stoppage was okay because realistically he would have been on top of him quicker and it would have been out quicker. But it was also kind of you know saving. Uh, Sterling and, and everything that went on, you know, and just seeing what's go about to happen. But no, I, overall, I love the comparison between the two. The more I, the more I look at it, the more I see it. Uh, just because it's it's it is very very similar situations from where they started, where they're at, uh, and it, kind of what they're going through. Yeah, definitely. But guys, let's jump over to the NFL. Talk a little bit of football. First off, we talked about Jonathan Taylor a little while back. Jonathan Taylor was supposedly going to be put on the trade block. He was looking for a trade. It seemed like maybe they worked some things out and he was going to stay because we didn't hear any more news about it. And now it looks like officially the team is allowing John, uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor to go and look at other teams, look for look around for a trade, which to me kind of sounds a little bit like the Lamar situation. You know what? Screw it. I'm out of here. Uh, you don't want to pay me what I'm worth and I'm out of here. And you go shop around and nobody else wants to pay you what you think you're worth. And you just end up coming back to the team. That's almost what this sounds like. I don't know if that's going to be the case with, with Jonathan Taylor, because I do think he's, he's worth a lot to a lot of teams um, where it's not quite the same comparison between him and Lamar. So kind of looking at this, I mean, he's, he's officially out there on the trade block. Uh, I, I want to hear from you guys where you'd like to see Jonathan Taylor end up, because personally I'm all for, him going over to the Eagles only because now they have DeAndre Swift. So you've got Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift. You've got a Taylor Swift duo right there, and I love the idea of it. So, I mean, Blake, do you got some ideas of, of where else Jonathan Taylor could go other than the, the uh, Taylor Swift duo? <laughs> the Taylor Swift duo, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I'm just trying to sit here and think off the top of my head, like what's the Dallas situation look like? Um, I, I think Dallas is looking good with Pollard and and uh, Deuce Vaughn kind of doing yeah. it back down there. Yeah, they got. I feel those. like Miami could still be looking for somebody since they didn't get Dalvin. Yep, Miami. Uh, what about Arizona? What is what is Arizona? They got James, like? Connor, James Connor, but I don't think they really have a whole lot outside of that, and he's not been really a premier back type of guy. Yeah. Um. Man, there's just. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to think about running backs around the league and like who. who... It's a deep year for running backs. It's Definitely crazy. It's huge. Yeah, and it, and it um, is. It's hard because I mean, you go over to the Steelers. They've got Najee. You go over to the Browns, and and they've got uh, uh, they've got Nick Chubb, and you know even what about even... Minnesota? Minnesota. Uh, I mean, uh... they they could, but like like I mentioned before, I think that would be a really cool spot for somebody to land. But they got rid of Dalvin Cook for salary cap issues. So I don't think that's really an option for them. Yeah. Mm, Especially man, when the main I'm, reason why why Jonathan Taylor's wanting to leave is for money. Yeah, and and I don't blame him for getting out of Indy. Like I just no, think that's no. a terrible situation. Like uh, I, I'm not a fan of the owner, and and um, I'm I'm not a fan of of just that organization and how they've ran things over the years. Like you just kind of pushed Andrew Luck into retirement, and uh, it's just. It's it's been a it's been a show. I'll tell you that it's been a show and and not a good one. So I don't know, man. Well, like wherever he ends up, you know he's gonna ball out. Somebody's gonna be looking for him. Like I just don't want him to go to a team that's like not very competitive. You know, um, I don't See, know. I, I don't know where he might end up. I'm I'm also looking down. You know, if you look over at the other Florida team in, in uh, Tampa Bay, uh, I don't the think Buccaneers, I don't think I really like their their running back situation right now. So I mean, if they were able to add that. I, and, and I'm going to get back to them here in a second, too. But, uh, uh, Jeremy, do you, do you have any other kind of thoughts or places where maybe Jonathan could end up? I was kind of thinking Miami a little bit. Obviously, I know of Dalvin Cook taking the potential and going to look. But I'm going to throw this out there. I want your opinion, and I want your opinion, Blake. I know you just obviously mentioned, Blake, you, you want to see him go to a place that will be competitive and then they're going to have a good season. But do you think maybe the Chicago Bears can maybe do something? Yeah, I'm not who sure. Do they have? I'm not sure because they do have David Montgomery. Uh, yeah. I feel like they've got another back too, but I can't think about who their other back would be right now. Yeah, I can, but I'm drawing. What about yeah. Carolina? What was that? In North Carolina. What for, about for, Carolina? The Panthers. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a possibility. I mean, they they definitely need it, and I feel like they should have the salary cap to be able to please him. I always say mm-hmm. he, he would look good in black and orange, but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I do like the idea. Get rid of Mixon and bring in Jonathan Taylor. I mean. Hey. 
I hate to root against my Oklahoma boys like yeah. that, but dude, like, <laughs> you know, the, the fact that you're just not want to talk. But uh, another thing that I wanted to bring up with Tampa Bay, just because for one, I think it would be good because you think I think they still have the potential to be a good team, just because their defense is still going to be there. Oh, it's definitely. really the same defense that they've had. Yeah, uh, and and they've had a tough defense for this the past three or four years. So looking down at Tampa Bay. They just announced that Baker is going to be starting down there. I'm biased, so I want to hear from you guys because, I'm, I'm of course, I'm, I, I love Baker, and I hope that he has all of the success. But seeing him in the preseason uh, and, and you know, even even connections with guys like Trey Palmer, who's a rookie coming out of Nebraska, and seeing what, what he's doing even with rookies on the field right now. I know it's preseason, so I don't want to look too far ahead of this, but does it feel like this is maybe finally the season for a bounce back from Baker? Blake, what do you think? This, this Copenhagen can? Yeah. It's empty because it's trash. All right? Oh. That's 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 Baker, man. Look, I love him. Oh. I, loved, I loved him when he was at Oklahoma, uh, but it just hasn't worked out, man. And I just don't think going to Tampa is the is the answer. So, I, I mean, what are they – they got Kyle Trask sitting there at, at the two spot. Yep. I think you might see some, you might see some rotating quarterbacks this year down in Tampa. I'm just not, I'm not really high on Baker to to turn it around. Man, I felt attacked there. Ooh, <laughs> that hurts. I guess that was a little bit of payback for me ripping on your Yankees, who also let up another sweep to the Boston Red Sox. But uh, <laughs> they're here done. We go. Here but we Jeremy, go. you you got you got thoughts on on Tampa and, and just Baker? I think Baker will. Do pretty good. Obviously, I know seeing the highlights that he's made, like you mentioned with Trey Palmer, then seeing other clips, it, I think it'll be an interesting year. But my thing is, Baker's a good quarterback. Don't get me wrong. He just he needs to keep his composure. I know when he was with the Rams and even in college, everyone can never forget the video of, of Baker Mayfield, John, the other sideline, and saying words that I cannot repeat on the air. Um <laughs> Baker Mayfield, you just need to sincerely stick to your game, dude. See, I, I would say I'm I'm on the other side of that. I think Baker has kept too much of his composure where c- really? composure where when he was with the Rams and you see him headbutting his his, oh, his teammates and being crazy over there. That's when he's at his best. Is when he's just being crazy. Let him loose. When he lost his you know, last brain cell. Keep, keep someone see, keep someone close to him to keep him out of trouble. Because what we saw at Oklahoma is that he got himself into legal trouble yeah. and stuff like that. But outside of that, I mean, you, you saw him at, at Kansas uh, doing some you know uh, some sideline antics that weren't really approved of by a lot of college football fans, <laughs> or, or even at Ohio State planting the flag in the middle of the field and oh, causing man. a lot of people to hate him for it. Yeah. I, I think I think letting him loose a little bit is kind of what you have to do. Is just hey, go out there and be Baker because let's be honest, I think Baker. I, I haven't seen that when he was with the Browns. You saw that in his first season, and you saw what he did his first season. Yeah. You saw them try to t- try to wrangle that in. And you didn't see the same production. I know there was a lot of other moving factors around that, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw out the offensive line, which I think is it looks like it's improved a lot at Tampa, which is shocking because it was trash last year. Um, but even even looking over whenever he went to the Panthers and seeing what he had there, not really any weapons around him, which is why I feel like it's going to be really hard for Bryce Young to have a, a breakout season. So maybe he does need a running back like Jonathan Taylor to help out. Yeah. But you know, so I, I and then you finally see Baker go over to the Rams. And you don't give him a playbook or anything. You just say, hey, it's, I know you just came here two days ago and got to do a little bit of a walkthrough and, and meet the guys, but just go let loose. And then you saw how he performed. I think that's what you have to do with a guy like Baker. Of course, try to keep him contained and, and maybe too much. Uh, you know, you don't want him to get in, in some kind of trouble where he's he's getting some sort of fine or anything like that or legal trouble. But uh, I, I, I do think that that's the way you, you, you let out the best bakers to just let him loose and let him be himself. Josh, I want to ask you this. With this year, obviously, Baker, do you think Baker's on the hot seat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's he's got this year to prove himself or he's yeah. probably not going to be able to sign another contract. Yeah. So I, I think I think that is that is the, the absolute, uh, you know, the, the absolute truth with Baker. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot of people out there that are kind of in the same boat as me where I'm, I'm rooting for him. I want him to. I don't I don't have the utmost, uh, you know, uh, the utmost uh, confidence in him that he's going to be able to do it. But 
uh, he, he's a dude that I'm, I, of course, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be biased. I'm going to stand by, stand by Baker and, and, uh, you know, watch him. I've even got his, his Browns jersey from the, the day he was drafted. I ordered that jersey. Yeah, but you so, have it hanging on the wall to where it won't be seen. That, that's all right. It's, <laughs> it's, we have too much wall space uh, wanna, that's not seen. I want to ask Blake, what do you think of Baker Mayfield one more time? Trash. Trash. <laughs> uh, what about his backup QB, Kyle Trash? Uh, uh, Trask. <laughs> Man, I just uh, look. Kyle was a dog at Florida, man. He was. Uh, he was at one point. So was Baker, just, though. Baker yeah, was I a just, dog at Oklahoma. I just don't know. I just don't know about Tampa, man. I, I just like losing the goat and everything, and and they got uh, dudes to work with, though. So I mean, yeah, I feel like do. I feel they like do. as long as as long as the right things click together, I feel like it could be the right move for him. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, only time will tell. Yeah, yeah, definitely. seven, eight wins. Yeah, yeah, maybe or maybe twelve. You never know. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go in the middle. I'll give you ten. All right, let's jump over to Jim Harbaugh. We talked about this possible suspension that there was a lot of talk with. Uh, is he going to be suspended? And there was all this kind of draw it out and long discussion. It's now been been released where Michigan has now decided amongst themselves that they're just going to do a three game suspension. I want to hear from you guys. So that's kind of one of the kind of the question of the day as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to comment down below. I want to hear from you guys. Yes. Is this a chess move by Michigan, or was them? It, it, or, you know, and what I mean by that is this: Michigan trying to get ahead of other things to try to throw off the scent uh, of what else they might have been doing, or is this Michigan just trying to 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 stay ahead of things and just be like, you know, you know what, we're gonna do this. And kind of playing the the NCAA and saying, you know what, you were going to try to do four games. We're just going to do three games because we don't care. We're going to move on and get this thing out of the way. And I, I kind of want to hear that from you two as well. Is is this something where maybe there's some more some more things like this? Uh, you know, maybe he gave out more than just a cheeseburger. Maybe he gave him a cheeseburger and cheese curds. Uh, oh. You know, something like that. Maybe there was lettuce and tomato on the cheeseburger. We don't know. Um, no, no. What I'm talking about is that maybe there's some more things, you know, some more scenarios like this that maybe they're trying to hide and just hurry up and push this all over. Or do you think that this is just them just trying to be pro- proactive? I think they're just trying to get it over with, honestly, and just get it out. Like, hey, yes. three games. We did our investigation. Whatever. Like, we don't have any tough quality opponents in those first three games. Get it over with, and let's get back on track to uh, competing for a national championship. So, uh, I think there's bigger things to look at for Michigan football this year. Uh, I think that if they don't play in the national championship game, it is a complete failure. Uh, and you know, I, look, I thought they should have played in it last year, but I did pick TCU to win that football game. Uh, but there's so much talent on this team this year and the, all the starters coming back. I think Michigan just kind of got fed up with everything and said, look, three games, let's push it aside. Let's get rid of it. It's over with. It was stupid to begin with. Uh, it's it's a dang cheeseburger, man. Grow up. Like dudes are making millions of dollars on NIL deals now. So like, that's, just, that's where I think this whole thing, and I think we talked about this, is just silly for the fact that this dude can't get a cheeseburger, but he can sign with – Michigan and end up making millions of dollars. But uh, where do you stand? Do you think this is a, a chess move or just get it over with? I was thinking about the cheeseburger. I'm not going to lie. But, um, <laughs> uh, can, we, can we throw some chicken tenders and some honey mustard? Dude, you in got me that? going at cheese curds. I'm a sucker for cheese curds from Culver's. <laughs> but this is just, in my opinion, it's stupid. Okay, you got three games, get it over with, and let's go. Just because – there's like you guys have mentioned. There's so much other big things that actually could be something worth suspending on and just actually making it a big deal about it. But over a cheeseburger for crying out loud! What the heck are we doing nowadays? Like, I might go get a cheeseburger after this. I'm not gonna lie, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, <laughs> it still baffles me about this entire situation, but. There's a reason why I sit my butt on the couch watching sports instead of calling the sports and. I'm just ready for this to get over with, see Jim Harbaugh back with Michigan, then run the table, hopefully getting themselves to a national championship. And that's and losing it. the national championship to Oklahoma. That's the oh. ideal situation, right? No, so no. we can <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what I'm hearing over there. But let's go ahead and move on, guys. I uh, didn't hear it. <laughs> I, so so the only reason why I think, you know, I, I 
I don't know. I'm, I'm having a hard time because I want I want to believe and I'm hoping that it is just them getting it over with. I do, but I, hope so. I, I just I just know what it smells like, and I've smelled this before. I'm just hoping that they don't have something hiding behind the curtain, uh, where maybe there's a little man behind that curtain that they don't want them to see. Uh, so let's just hope that that's all that's all it is. Let's hurry up and get this pushed by, uh, and forget about it. And maybe we shouldn't be giving these ideas to the NCAA so that they have something yeah. to look at, but. It just makes me worry. So Michigan, if there is something behind the behind the scenes, maybe do it like Tennessee did with Jeremy Pruitt and just get it out of the way and and get done with it. Yeah. Josh, did you have uh, did you have a chance to watch Swamp Kings? No, yeah. I haven't. I haven't. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just know. I know you went in on my Yankees, so I was just wondering if you saw the episode of Florida in the national championship game. Oh, you mean where they, that that big old pass interference play that really kind of blew up the mm. whole game, you know, and just kind of mm. stopped stopped Oklahoma from that. Hey, mm. I'm pretty mm. sure Oklahoma made it to that national championship, though, didn't they? Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure Auburn's won one since the last time y'all have. So. Yeah. Oh. True. True. <laughs> But I don't think Auburn will get there before Oklahoma does, so we'll, we'll, we'll have and, to put a little wager on that. And and we had the greatest uh, college football player of all time. So yeah. <laughs> who's that? Play? You guys didn't have Baker Mayfield. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> that is Cameron Jarrell Newton. Cameron Newton, that joker. <laughs> nah, he's a phenomenal player. I can't I can't even argue <laughs> with you on that. But guys, let's jump over to the two minute drill. But I guess before we do, let's mention another. Uh, sponsor of ours because we always have to make sure to show a little bit of love to Built Bar um, because of course we all know that we need to all have the energy to get through our day. It's been a lot of a lot of heat lately. Uh, mm. It's been really hot out, yes. uh, over a hundred degrees, and it has not been fun. But it drains your energy when it's so hot outside, and the only way to to, to obtain more energy is by finding a way and that is through built bar built bar gives you the kind of energy that you need it's not your typical protein bar they're nutritious packed with protein and guess what they're also amazing when it comes to taste so you can you can taste all of their flavors they have all kinds of uh, enticing flavors like salted caramel coconut and even cookies and cream and guess what it's covered in a hundred percent real chocolate so go check them out, built.com. That's B-U-I-L-T.com. Because whether you're working out, hiking, or chasing after your kids, or maybe you're just sitting back, chilling out, listening to our podcast, whatever the case may be, Built Bars are the perfect companion to keep you energized and satisfied, satisfied without piling on all these sugars or sketchy additives and all that kind of crap. So for our loyal listeners out there, if you're listening to this right now, you can go over to built.com. And we have a great deal for you because you can go to built.com and use our promo code RISING2. That's R I S I N G T O for 10% off. Yes, an amazing product for an amazing deal. You can get it for a whopping 10% off. Again, that is RISING2, all one word R I S I N G T O for 10% off. And another thing that I saw them add to their, their uh, uh, website here recently, they also finally came out with built. Uh, bags of pro protein uh, i believe it was really? protein bags so i'm gonna have to get my hands on some of that Ooh. check that out uh, especially before hitting the gym which i've been trying to do a little bit more lately and trying to trying to build up a little bit a little bit better so again go to built.com pull that we're back up real quick one more time for them to see that's b-u-i-l-t.com and use code rising to r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o for 10 percent off some amazing products over there at Built Bar. So go check them out, Built Bars, or like I said, try out their new protein uh, bags, which is something I'm going to have to get my hands on very soon. Me too. But guys, let's get into the two-minute drill. And for those who are new to the show, this is where we take two minutes to discuss each of our topics that are in the two-minute drill. And there was a lot to get to. We kept on adding to it. Dude. So, Jeremy, what do we got over Dude, there? There was so many topics that we all kept adding on, but... Sticking to the fighting scene, not UFC, but on to the NFL field. Jason Kelsey, I mean, uh, Jason Kelsey, Travis Kelsey's brother, fighting during the Eagles versus Colts joint practice. With the Eagles and Colts set to play on Philly on Thursday, then seeing Jason Kelsey sticking up for his teammate and getting mowed over a couple times in a row, Jason Kelsey got the best of him, letting his emotions get to him, then started a fight, ended practice early. And like I, like I mentioned to you, Josh, we all get hot. We all tempers flare during football practice. Then do you think this is going to settle into the season? And Do you think going into Thursday playing against Philadelphia that it's going to be a pretty chippy game? 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. I think uh, I think we kind of need a little bit more of this, and this is why I like these joint practices, is because you need a little bit a little bit of this chippiness. And for anyone who's played football and never gotten any kind of these little these little I don't know what you call them, I, they they want to advertise this as a fight. It's There's a, a bunch of bunch of dudes just kind of pushing on each other and letting them know who's boss and showing each other you don't mess with with my my guy and. That needs to happen, and a lot of a lot of flack got thrown towards Coach Prime. I think the way he did it was a little different because he's expecting his guys to fight with each other. I'm not cool with that, but fighting with the other team and kind of pushing each other around as long as you're not going full Aaron Donald and swinging a helmet to try to take sure. somebody out and give them a concussion or kill them, uh, let's. Let, I'm, I'm all for it. I think we need some of this chippy, chipperness, and that's the main reason why I think physical contact sports like football are so great for young men, especially. Uh, even even older men like Jason Kelsey, you know, you have some of that that aggression build up, and it's a great way to let it out. So I think this is good, and I think I hope it does kind of lead to some more rivalries and things like that. Kind of even rivalries on the field are a lot of fun. So maybe this can be one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Then Blake, yeah, I know. Obviously, with having Travis Kelsey doing the same thing earlier, seeing clips of mm-hmm. that, I know. I'm hoping this isn't a Kelsey thing where they start getting really chippy and start fighting people. Um, what oh, do you I have to say is. about this entire situation? I'm I'm with I'm with Josh here. Like I, I love the chippiness, uh, and if you've ever played football before, you know like this stuff goes on. It happens. I think we need to see more of it. Kind of like I told you guys with Tim Anderson getting knocked out by J Ram in baseball. I think you need to see more of that. Uh, but it's football. Things like this are going to happen. Tempers are going to flare. We know Jason Kelsey is a true professional of the game, and uh, and you, you're not gonna you're not gonna see a better guy. Uh, or a better teammate. So, look, stuff happens. Uh, you move on. I think the game is is just it's going to be another game, right? You're going to go about your business, and you're going to try to win a football game and, and try to get better. So uh, that's the main goal. But things like this happen on the football field, man. Yeah, absolutely. Then going on to our next topic, it's a, it's a little heavy on the heart just because I know you, we've heard of stuff about this then – it, it just hits everyone in the heartstrings, but um, I'll just get to it. Titans cornerback Caleb For- Farley's home explosion in Carolina. Then, of course, the one thing that hit the heartstring, it was one thing to see about his home being exploded, but hearing that his father, Robert Farley, at the age of 61, was in the house and he was pa- and he was announced dead at the age of 61, like I said. I know, obviously, of course, between all three of us, our thoughts and condolences go out to Farley, the Farley family, and just everybody. Then it's a it's a horrible, horrible incident to happen to have to anybody. Then I I I've heard about it local, like not far from our area. But it, Blake, I know there's been rumors for having a gas leak, and obviously finding some ignition of a fire. Um, what do you think? How do you think he's going to handle this entire situation and having to go and play for just in general, just having this in the back of your mind? Just give me your thoughts about all of this. Dude, Jeremy, I, I did not know that his dad was in the home. Like, that's that's devastating. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Man, where do you even start, right? Like, yeah. I, I couldn't imagine uh, something like that happening and, and a family member, especially my dad being in the home, like that's insane. But I, I've, I, this happened like last weekend in Pennsylvania too, right? Like they're in a subdivision, like three houses were demolished yeah. by a gas. Leak. Like it's crazy, man. Um, how do you, how do you go play football after this? Right. You know, like, uh, one thing I do want to point out is I remember growing up, I was a huge Brett Farr fan. And, uh, and his dad passed away. Uh, and, and the next night he went on Monday night football and had one of the greatest performances in NFL history. Right. Uh, so I kind of look at this as, as, you know, uh, wear your dad on your chest, man, and, and, and go ball out and, and, and go have a year and a pro bowl type year and, and do it all in his memory. Right. And, Absolutely. Uh, that's tough, dude. Like, I just uh, – I did not know his dad was in the home. Like, uh, that's the first I'm hearing of that. That is – that's tough. Yeah. The, I didn't know about it either until I started reading the article. But, Josh, I know 
just kind of same question to you. What do you have to say about all this? Yeah, I mean, first off, you know, thoughts and prayers out to the families, you know, and just everyone affected, even the, even the teammates. You know, you just had a, a, a brother, you know, who, who just, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure he also died in, in the, the explosion as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, just terrible, uh, terrible situation. So, because uh, I believe there was him and his father, and then I think there was another one injured. Uh, I knew if, it was if another I injury. Right. I didn't know if it was. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure both him and his father had had died in this this oh, explosion. Man. And again, it was a gas leak uh, that happened somehow. It got ignited, and yeah, it's it's terrible. I I have been hearing of of a few different cases of this happening here recently, uh, and I think the one in, in uh, Pennsylvania was one. I did hear about uh, that. There was there was a one another one that was a little closer. Uh, near here, and it's, I don't know if it's It was heat, on the Mars. Uh, or what the case was. Is that what it was? Yeah, there was one on the Mars. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, whatever whatever the case is, I mean, I, I hope this, this stuff can get solved. But as as the time, you know, as we're hearing about this, uh, just really all, all you can say is thoughts and prayers out to the, the families, teammates, and everyone affected. Yeah, absolutely. Now, going on to our next topic, stay on the football topic. I know a lot of people have been talking about this, but um, there's been – I'll just get straight to it. Joey Sly drilling the 49-yard field goal to end the Baltimore Ravens' 24 game, preseason game winning streak. Then I will admit it's been it's pretty impressive to keep a record since 2015. But I know with a lot of people saying it's just preseason, it's just a record. It's it's stupid. But Blake, do you think this is not stupid, or what do you think of this entire situation of it? I'm gonna tell y'all. Um... I don't give a dang about no preseason. <laughs> uh, that's, what I, that's what I was waiting to hear. It was just maybe like a whoopee do or something. Could not care less about uh, preseason football. Like, don't watch it. Don't uh, really care for it. Uh, it's just not exciting to me. So, um, you know, it, it. I mean, cool. Like, hey, God drilled a field goal to win it. Like, uh, I want to see you do it in January, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, you, good job. You won 24 games straight in the preseason. How about you do that in the regular season? You know, do pull, pull together 20, 24 games straight in the regular season. That's what I'll be impressed with. Uh, go, go win yourself a couple of conference uh, championships. And, you know, since you've gotten Lamar, you guys really haven't been in contention for the most part. Like, Go go win something bigger, but Literally. other than that, pretty pretty cool, pretty cool story that you guys won that many, but it didn't do anything for your regular season. So no. kind of kind of build on top of that, and uh, I, I'm kind of glad to see them fall just be, just for that reason. You know what? No, you deserve to lose a preseason game if you're gonna sit here and flaunt it like it's something good. Yeah. So get out of here with that. Well, the funny thing is, the uh, Washington's, I think it was his guard, Simo. Uh, I can never say his name right. Um, he was chirping about this entire time. He was the one who thought this was completely stupid. <laughs> but um, now, obviously, realizing that this is no longer a thing, so looks like I guess he has his word across. But no one really celebrates a preseason game. No. But going on in the next topic, Sam Williams, the Dallas Cowboys defensive end, has been arrested. The 24-year-old has been arrested by the Frisco police down in Texas. Sunday night on charges of possession of a controlled substance and unlawful carrying of a weapon. Hanging now, out with John Moran a little too much. Oh, man. I didn't know we were going to go that far. Um, <laughs> Josh, I Josh, I know, obviously, with some of the charges, I mean, having possession of THC, then a low-level state felony, and then unlawful carrying a weapon as a misdemeanor, according to the state of Texas. Then Williams has had a run-in with the police before. This is a second go-around with them. Do you think he's starting to get a bad reputation in this early NFL career? Yeah, so I mean, you really just gotta gotta reach out to him and just tell him like what, tell tell him straight, uh, much like what we did with with John Morant. We you know we talked about John Morant and how the stupid decisions that he's making, where it's leading him, and the same thing here with Sam Williams. Like, dude, you made it to the NFL. You're 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 not hot stuff though, because they really don't care if you're not on the roster. Let's be honest with the situation. They they could care less if you're off the roster. Because you haven't contributed to the team yet, how about you stop and get your life straight, and and stop dealing around with with stuff like this? I don't know if you're dealing with the wrong people, uh, what the case is, but it just sucks to see a dude like this. You had enough talent to make it to the to the NFL and, and be signed by a team. You're not just a free agent out there in the NFL uh, who can't make it to a team. You were signed to a team in the NFL. And, and you just blew it because you, you put yourself in a bad situation with the wrong people, wrong time, wrong place, whatever the case may be. Uh, it, it just sucks to see that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Blake, what do you what are your thoughts about all this? I'm right there with Josh. Uh, I completely agree. Uh, I, look, get it right, get it taken care of, uh, and and just be better, man. Like like it's just it's not hard to stay out of trouble. I know I get it. You make millions of dollars, and the lifestyle comes around and everything like that. But um, you know, like Josh said, you're in the NFL, and we all know what the NFL stands for. It stands for not for long, right? So yeah. <laughs> you know. Hey, you keep messing around, you're, you're going to get in hot water, and eventually you're going to find yourself out of the league. So uh, get it together and start worrying about playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't, I've didn't. i never heard the not for long one. That's the first one for me. I like that. But going on to our next topic, Reggie Bush suing the NCAA, which was really surprising. Um, former Southern California running back, obviously, Reggie Bush plans to file a defamation lawsuit against the NCAA over a statement made by college sports governing body about the reasoning for its decision not to restore the Heisman Trophy winner's records. Blake, I I didn't know he gave back his Heisman Trophies for this kind of a situation. Oh, yeah, that was huge. Yeah, that, I, I didn't realize it was – like, I knew it was big, but I didn't think it was this big. Like, holy cow. Like, yeah, that, I, that was a huge deal that, like, Reggie's not, not even – recognized as a, as a Heisman winner or anything. Yeah, that's that's mind-boggling to me. Blake, what do you think about Reggie Bush and his per, and his predicament that he's doing? Uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but uh, just just please, like, I was 14 years old when Reggie Bush won the Heisman, uh, and please just give him his trophy back so all of this can go away. Like, we know who the best was. I can't help it that he got taken from the, the projects to a nice living environment. Like, I like that's not, you know, who cares? Like dudes now are making millions on NIL deals. It's over with. It happened. Who cares? Just give the man his trophy back because he deserved it. And he won that on the field. He did that with every electrifying run, every electrifying catch. Uh, and, and he was, in my opinion, the most electrifying college football player that I've ever seen. Uh, I just think watching him in those days, man, it was it was must see TV. You know, and this was back when every game didn't get broadcast on on TV like it does today. You didn't have a a Pac-10 network. You didn't have an SEC network, a Longhorn network. Big Ten Network, ACC Network. Like you used to have to pay like forty nine ninety nine to see some of the games on pay per view, right? So like, it, and and people were paying that just to watch Reggie, like because he was he like even when they played a little bitty team, like just throw out a, a UC Santa Barbara or something, you know, something crazy like that out there on the West Coast. People were paying to watch him just touch the football. Like, that's all you wanted to see. I remember the run against Fresno State down the sideline, and he just wraps the football around his back and brings it into the other hand and takes off across the field. Like, bro, it was insane the things he did on the football field. I don't think the lawsuit's going to go anywhere. It is what it is. Uh, But just give the man his trophy back because he deserves it. Like, I don't care what happened off the field. Absolutely. Then, Josh, what do you got to say? Yeah, so they, they took away a lot of his his personal records that he he gained, and then, of yeah. course, the Heisman uh, Trophy. I, I agree with Blake. Give it back to him because he, he did earn that. I think it's silly, even without NIL and what it is today, I think it's silly that you can take away a trophy that you gave to somebody and just kind of mark it up. You know, a lot like what we did with, like, Penn State's wins or Tennessee's wins here recently, you know, and stuff like that, that, that you can just take that away. Like, no, that happened. He did win the Heisman. We recognize that he won the Heisman. He is a Heisman winner to us because he, he won it. He earned it. Uh, so I, I think it's silly. Uh, and a lot of this coming from from him saying that, I guess, the NCAA said that he was involved in a pay-to-play uh, situation, which they're, they're, you know it can't be proven and all this. I, I don't really care about any of that, but I do hope that they that maybe this this can lead back to giving him his, his trophy. Absolutely. What do you got, Blake? Look, I, I just wanted to make this point about Reggie, man. Is I was a freshman in high school, 14 years old, uh, and how big of an athlete and a superstar he was is I'm an Auburn fan, diehard Auburn fan. Love him. But in my binder, bro, I had went home and I like printed out pictures of Reggie Bush and the dive over UCLA and everything, and 
and uh, like him flipping into the end zone and stuff. And I had taken those pictures and slid them down into the front of my binder. So like when my binder was laying on the desk, you just saw Reggie Bush. And like, that's how big of a star he was. It's like, I love Auburn to death. And we had Cadillac and Ronnie Brown, but like Reggie Bush was that dude, man. Like, I, I just I hate that that uh, you know they don't recognize him as a Heisman and like he can't go to the ceremonies and things like that. Like uh, he's still the the Heisman winner in in my eyes and he always will be. That's why I think you should just give the trophy back to him. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's that's all that we got for two minutes. But sticking with Reggie Bush, you de- you definitely rightfully deserve what you deserve. That's the that's the bottom line from all of us. But that's all we got for two minutes, old Josh. What do we got left on today's episode? Yeah, yeah, and like I said too, I think just looking at what NIL is today too. Uh, kids can go and get get paid Millions for this stuff today. But uh guys, we have we what was this now? A few weeks ago we brought you uh our number twenty through number twelve of our top twenty guys to watch out for. So this isn't our top twenty guys that we think are, are going to be the best guys in college football, but the top 20 guys to watch out for, some guys that we expect a big turnaround or maybe even just a breakout season, whatever the, whatever the case may be. And so we're going to get to them. If you want to tune in for more college football talk, we encourage you to tune in with us on Saturday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern. Yep. You can tune in on youtube and you can check us out on there we will be live so which also means you can jump in the live chat as well and we're going to try to go to some locations where we'll we'll also have a live audience uh uh, also watching uh and then also we're also talking about maybe throwing in some raffling and stuff like that raffle off some fun gear and stuff like that for our listeners to kind of join in with and then of course you're going to have to join in and watch and see what our picks are on saturday mornings so that you can bet against us on bro throw uh, which you'll have to sign up for. You can always go and check them out at brothrow.com slash rising2. That's B-R-O-T-H-R-O-W dot com slash R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O. You want to sign up there and sign up using that link so you can join into our private group so you can bet against us if you don't like the way that we are making picks. But guys, let's start it off. Blake, you're going to start us off with number 11. We're jumping into our number 11 and then getting into the top 10 for top 20 guys to look out for this upcoming season. Who do you got? Will Johnson, DB at Michigan, uh, 6'2", 200 pounds, a highly rated guy uh, right out of high school. Last year he was a true freshman, played his way onto the field later in the season. I think he ended up playing a total of five games. Uh, I know he had 27 tackles, uh, 25 of them were solos, had three picks, nice hands as a DB Big, physical. Uh, you love to see that six foot, six one, six two frame at the DB position nowadays. Uh, we're kind of going away from the five nine, five ten guys uh, because you're starting to see the length out at wide receiver, right? So, uh, big physical frame out there. Uh, tackles well, gets in and out of his breaks really quick. Great hips uh, and and just a, a superstar, right? I, I I think he even got some love late in the season by PFF. Uh, on, on some postseason polls uh, that, that that they uh, put out there. So this guy's talented, man. He's going to be the lockdown corner out there at Michigan this year, and there's a lot of excitement going around on that defense. Uh, and, and, you know, the three picks, like I said, uh, expect that to grow this year. I, th- I think he could end up with five, six, seven picks this year. Uh, or, you know what, he could end up with with none because they might not throw the football his way. <laughs> so, awesome. uh, if they're smart, maybe that's that's the way to go. But yeah, yeah, this is a talented kid. Yeah, and, and like I said before, I love that we're throwing in some some defensive guys and seeing some of these defensive guys take over on this list, which we jump into top ten. And to start off our top ten at number ten, we have Jazon Newton. Uh, he's who's also on the defense, defensive lineman at Illinois, a guy that a lot of people may not have known about too much about. Uh, you may not have heard his name too much. You may not really recognize his name. But I think that's going to change coming into this 2023-24 season because Illinois, let's be honest, I think when we saw Illinois do so well last season, it surprised us. And a big part of why they did so well was because of that defense. They didn't have a rocking offense. They had a running back, uh, and, and that was about it. 
you know, outside of that, they didn't have a whole lot on the offense to really to really prove who they are offensively. But on the defense, they stopped people. They stopped Michigan from scoring too much, and they were able to hold them within a tight game. Uh, and a huge part of that was looking at Jerzon Newton and seeing what Newton's able to do over there on, on the defensive line. Uh, and he could have gone into the, into the draft last year. And honestly, guys, I think he would have been a first or second round pick. Uh, I don't think he would have slid past the second round possibly a really early third round, but I don't think he would have dropped that late. That's how good this guy is. He's explosive. He doesn't have the stats on paper to show it, but scouts who see him recognize who this guy is. Last season, he had 59 total tackles and five and a half sacks and showed a lot more uh, than on the field than he did the season before. So watching him explode, watching how explosive and, and how powerful he can be on that defensive line there in Illinois. Uh, I expect this thing, this guy, uh, Jerzon Newton, to make a lot of big noise in Champaign, Illinois, this upcoming season. But let's jump over to number nine. Jeremy, who you got there at number nine? I got Michael Williams, the edge rusher from Georgia. The two, two, yeah, let me start that over. The six foot five, two sixty five pound sophomore started his twenty twenty two career, only starting in two games, which is. I mean, it's also Georgia, so you got to work your way in. You're the dogs. you got to fight your way in. But out of those two games they started in, he has 28 total sacks so far, including three QB sacks. So this this dog is definitely showing that he has a bark to him. But along with a team high, 30, 31 QB hurries now going to the 2023 season. He's named preseason media days all SEC first team. So looking into the future, he's definitely got a bright future, to say the least. I know for... Obviously, like I said, being at Georgia, you got to fight every single inch for getting playing time. You got so many star star people down at the state of Georgia. I mean, you can literally look at so much powerhouse out of that state. But looking at this cat, he's definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Having that much stats and not getting a whole bunch of playing time, that's huge to build your resume, even looking later into the future, getting into the NFL. Hopefully, of course, we always want to see everybody go to the NFL, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. But he's definitely got a bright future ahead of him, and obviously we wish him nothing but the best looking down the road. Michael Williams at number nine. Who we got at number eight, Blake? We got Kelvin Banks Jr., the six foot four, three hundred and twenty pound left tackle for the Longhorns. Uh, go check out all the accolades because it's too much to mention. But this guy, he played every game and started every game for Texas last year, and he was behind all of those great Bijan uh, performances that he had. Right, uh, great run blocking, great pass blocking. Uh, gonna need to gonna need to back that up this year uh, and make that first team Big Twelve. Uh, because, you know, you're going to have to keep Quinn Ewers upright and uh, a big test for them week two, traveling to the University of Alabama. So that one will be a fun one to watch. But you're going to see a guy, all right, watch Texas. You're going to see a guy that will be playing in the NFL very soon. So talented kid, uh, big, big, big left tackle uh, and can absolutely move people. I like it. And, yeah, again, looking over at, at some guys that – don't really get a whole lot of love there on the offensive line. You got to show them a little bit of love. But jumping down, Definitely. jumping down to number seven, a wide receiver out of Tennessee, and it's a guy that sat behind the Blitnikoff Award winner uh, Jalen Hyatt last season. His name is Squirrel White. Yes, you heard that right, Squirrel, Squirrel. White. And I think Squirrel, as his first name, fits him so perfect um, because he's like a, a, a rabid squirrel out there on the field running. He's a super fast dude. Uh, and he shined on the big stage whenever Jalen Hyatt sat out in the Orange Bowl. Uh, Squirrel White shined. He, he had a big game. He had 108 yards, a touchdown in that Orange Bowl versus Clemson. So it wasn't just any Joe Schmo team that they were playing against. For one, this is a big-time bowl game that he shined out in. Uh, and, and for number two, he, had, he helped uh, Joe Milton shine in that game as well. Joe Milton had an amazing connection with him. And on top of that, just seeing what he was able to do again, 108 yards, and one touchdown against a very good Clemson defense. So I love seeing what I was able to see from him in that game. I think his breakout speed is a lot like what we saw from Jalen Hyatt or those who are Oklahoma fans or know who uh, Marvin Mims is and watching what he did over at Oklahoma. Uh, he reminds me a lot of him because seeing where he stands, you know, and just kind of his 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 overall stature and everything, uh, you know, he, he reminds me a lot of him. He's five foot 10, 165 pounds. And the dude is just fast, and he can he can he can burn you really quick. And so just seeing his speed overall, his stats didn't really show a whole lot last year because, like I said, 
he was sitting behind Jalen Hyatt. And so being able to uh, not being able to, to shine underneath a guy like that's pretty, you know, pretty reasonable. But he was still racking in 16 yards per reception. So it just shows how how fast he was and how he was a deep threat. And so seeing this guy squirrel white, I'm really excited to see him shine this upcoming season here uh, for Tennessee. Jeremy. Looking at number six, we're going down to Blake's neck of the sticks, actually, from where he is from. And it is Peter Woods, the D lineman from Clemson, the six foot two, 300 pound freshman, is more than excited to get his college football career started. Going into, he was Thompson's high school in the state of Alabama. He was led them to four straight 7A state championships, and that's unbelievable from the the years of 2019 to 2022. The first team of Bama history to win four straight, that is since the Hoover days in the early 2000s. The team has literally combined a 50-5 and record in four years. That is unbelievable. Like, look, it's it's one thing to get eight or ten wins out of a high school career, but getting 50 wins, that is that is mind-boggling to me. Then I know Max Preps, was, he, he was rated first-team All-American by Max Preps and Alabama Player of the Year, and he finished his high school career with 260 total tackles, 72 tackles for a loss, and 29 and a half sacks. That is that is mind-boggling to me. Now, looking at him, obviously going into his career, he's definitely obviously going to be a, a big force to run with on the D-line. That's going to be huge for Clemson. He's definitely going to be a big powerhouse and hopefully get them to – easily what could be a national championship or even definitely a big playoff contention push and having D linemen like that with having a background with having such potential and good stats that's going to be huge going into it but looking into his career he's definitely got a bright future ahead of him then looking at it what do we got left Josh so we've got down to number five and Blake had got this one Blake who do we got there number five Josh, I think you're going to be excited about this one. We got Desan McCullough, the transfer from Indiana, 6'5", yes, 228, linebacker, something that Oklahoma really needs, excited with Brent Venables coming over here to play for him. Uh, this was a guy that started four games as a true freshman for Indiana last year, played in every game, uh, had 49 tackles. I think he had four sacks with like six and a half tackles for loss. Uh, the kid is a freak. Uh, stayed blowing up plays for Indiana last year uh, and, and something that Oklahoma fans have to be excited about. He was getting some some late uh, love for, for freshman All-American. Uh, so you got to be excited about this one. I think Brent Venables is, uh, is excited as well, Josh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And seeing him transfer over and everything and seeing what he brings to the table, he fits the scheme that Brent Venables wants. I'm really excited for it for sure. But jumping down to number four, I got Dallas Turner. Again, another defensive guy. Seeing this linebacker out of Alabama, uh, he's he's more of an edge rusher, which means that last season you didn't see as much of him, and he was kind of shadowed because of, of other guys that were on there. You know, we had Will Anderson. Um, but this year, this junior is going to stand out. He's six foot four, 242 pounds of pure muscle, extremely fast, able to, to work around the edge. He recorded 37 total tackles and four sacks last season. I expect even more from him this season. I think he's going to be able to rack up maybe in the 40s, maybe even touch the 50 mark. I'm expecting him to reach. I, I hope he can reach 52. That's kind of what I'm seeing out of him. Uh, I, I think Dallas Turner, the edge out of Alabama, I think he's got a lot of good things going for him over there. And I, I think this is going to be the, the year for him to shine because, like I said, we saw Will Anderson go off in the first round, and he was he was out of there. So he's not going to be there anymore. Who's going to step into that place? And I think it's going to be this guy, Dallas Turner. Again, recognize that name because I think you're going to hear that a lot come Saturdays when we're watching college football in Alabama on the big stage. But let's get into the top three guys. This is the three guys that we look at, and we think that they have got a big uh, a big opportunity to shine and a big opportunity to to be our top three guys yes, to look for this upcoming season. Kick it off with number three. Number three, we got Mason Smith, the D lineman from Bayou Country down in the old LSU. The six foot six, three hundred and fifteen pound redshirt sophomore enters his third season with LSU as one of the nation's top D linemen. That it's one thing to be recognized, but being recognized as one of the top defensive linemen, that's definitely huge and having a nice record with you. I know Despite missing all but one quarter of the 2022 season due to a knee injury, that's one kind of injury you never want to have in your college career, just in any injury in general. It's it's definitely devastating, but 
However, his rookie season, he played in nine games, and he started only four. Some of his career highs was having six tackles versus McNeese and having three and a half tackles for loss against McNeese as well. Then three sacks against McNeese and one QB hurry against Ole Miss. That's definitely – it's definitely one thing to get your name brought out there, but continuously having that kind of a stature and just getting back in the backfield and getting rushes, sacks, whatever the situation is, that's definitely going to be huge for you and boosting yourself for your college career. I know a lot of people give the defensive front linemen some a lot of crap just because you're in there you're trying to get them over, but you're definitely putting all of your hard work and effort into it just like every other single individual player on the field. So this cat is definitely going to be a dog to watch down the Bayou Country. So, Josh, we're kicking it off with number two. Who has number two? Blake, you've got number two for us. Who do we got there? Yeah, I, I got to watch this kid live last year, uh, Nick Singleton. And the running back from Penn State, uh, he had 150 carries for a thousand yards last year, a 6.8 average uh, rushing attempt, and he had 12 touchdowns uh, in his freshman campaign. Look, the guy went for 120 on Auburn last year, uh, and when I can tell you he can do anything out of the backfield, he can do anything. The 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 jump cut, uh, the stop and go, man, change directions, his vision, catching the ball out of the backfield, uh, absolutely incredible talent. The dude is insane, man. I, he it, like I know they had Saquon Barkley, but this kid is the next one up out of Penn State. I'm telling you, keep an eye on out uh, on him this year. I like it. Yeah, and, and looking at him, he had a, a great season last year, a great breakout season last year. But Definitely. absolutely, I think he's a guy. And you, you look at really these top three guys, too. They're guys that are, are going to make a difference for their team. Absolutely. Uh, I think these top three guys have the most potential doing that. Nick Nick Singleton being able to, to really help that team, help Drew Aller, that new quarterback over there. Uh, I think that's big for him. But the guy I'm looking at is a guy that he steps into the most important role on the field. Uh, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we had another quarterback. Uh, I don't think we did. Not a single quarterback in this entire entire top 20. Oh, boy. Which is kind of surprising. But we have a, a quarterback come in here at number one, and that is at a university in Ohio, all right? A, a, an Ohio State University who is, is battling back from, uh, you know, a, a tough loss against Georgia, but not, not really a detrimental end to the season, as an ending to the season that – you can be pretty pr- proud of. You can be proud of your guys for making it that far against the best team in the nation last year. But you don't have the quarterback who led you to that amazing game against Georgia. You have a new quarterback stepping in, and that is Kyle McCord, uh, the Ohio State uh, quarterback. Uh, he's he's going to step in, and we really haven't seen a whole lot. We haven't seen much from him at all. We've seen him in garbage time. The only time we saw a, an actual start, there was one start for him on his entire collegiate career, and that was back in 2021 against Akron. And if I remember correctly, that was at home in front of your own stadium. And he put up 319 yards, two touchdowns. He did let up an interception, but he went for 72%. And yeah, that's against Akron. And we can we can talk about that. And that was two years ago. But what I want to talk about is the fact that that was two years ago. He's had two years of experience to build on this. And the reason why I think this guy is going to be so detrimental to how his team succeeds is because for one, he's a quarterback. And for two, you've got guys like Amika Agbuka and Marvin Harrison Jr. who are going to be out there and going to be complete dogs out there at wide receiver. So just throw the ball up, dude. Be confident in your receivers because you have the best wide receiver core in the nation, hands down. So just just believe in that. I think Kyle McCord, as, as much as we have questions about who he is and what he's going to come out to be, knowing that Ryan Day has that, that program uh, really under control when it comes to the offense, I think Kyle McCord's going to be able to step in there as long as we know that he's going to step in with confidence and knowing who his wide receivers are. I think he's going to do just fine. So one of the really our top guy to watch out for in this 2023-2024 season is going to be Kyle McCord. Guys, I just wanted to say uh, I fact-checked myself here a minute ago, and I wanted to point out that I made a mistake on Will Johnson. Uh, I said he he come on late in the season and only played five games. I'm sorry. Bro was hooping all year uh, as a true freshman. So uh, oh, I man. wanted to point out, Ouch. yeah, uh, 
dude is uh dude's a baller so no thanks for pointing uh, that yeah. out too because I, I wouldn't have caught you on it so i yeah, appreciate that too. no yeah i mean it's it's crazy too as a true freshman to be sitting in there all year uh just just shows how much you stand up but guys that was our top 20 uh i'll 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 try to post the link down below if you want to watch the first part of the top 20. Uh, so we had 20 through 12. Today we gave you 11 through number one. And guys, this is our last episode before we get into college football season. We have college football this Saturday. Let's go. So again, reminder for everyone, we thank you so much for watching right now. But make sure you come back on Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. You can watch us live right here on YouTube. And we are going to make sure that we bring you all the energy. And who knows? I'm th I'm thinking I'm trying to cook something up for uh, a possible new location for us in the works. Uh, that's TBD. But regardless, we're trying to get new locations and stuff to kind of make it a little more exciting too. So if you if you if you know that you're going to be in the area, we'll try to release those ahead of time so people know where where we're at. But if you're in the area, maybe you can stop by and say hi and you can enter into the raffles. We're going to try to find a way for our, our listeners online if you're watching uh, virtually to also join in some of those raffles too if that's something you want to join, join in with. But guys, we thank you so much. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because we, like I said, we're trying to reach that 5,000 mark. I think we're at 4,400 right now or something like that. Something. So let's try to hit that 5,000 mark by next weekend. Uh, we thank you so much for all that you do here and you can also hit that like button. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the best thing you can do over there is just give us a five-star review. We thank you all so much for helping us grow and getting to the point where we're at. We just hope that we keep on going upward from here. And until next time.